Hi, my name is Seon Huang and I'm from University of Florida. I am interviewing you today at World Relief Jacksonville office in Jacksonville, Florida. Can you please tell us your name and spell it out for us? Okay, my name is Sion, so uh, T-S-I-O-N. Uh, I am from Eritrea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, can you also spell out your last name? Okay, my last name is very long, so G-E-B-R-E-G-Z-I-A-B-H-E-R. -E oh. That's <laughs> Gabriel's gap here. Oh, right. yeah. that's for confirmation. Yes, okay. okay. Great, okay. Um, now, can you um, tell us about your hometown? My hometown, uh, I born and grew up in Ethiopia, um, Addis Ababa. It's mm -hmm. called, the city is Addis Ababa. Uh, but um, it's complicated because um, it's different in our country. Uh, Eritrea and Ethiopia, it was the same country. Mm -hmm. But they fight and they split. But uh, even I grew up in born in Ethiopia, but my family, they are from Eritrea. Mm -hmm. So still I'm Eritrea. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, I was, you know, whole life, my, until I was 28, 29. I don't know Eritrea, where is that? But when the fight, uh, we have to go feed it to Eritrea because of my mom and dad background. You know, they were in Eritrea, mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I am um, originally grew up and born in Ethiopia. I feel myself it's Ethiopia, mm -hmm. but technically I'm not. I am because of my family. I'm Eritrea too. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So did your family move to Ethiopia to Addis Ababa? Yeah, they. Where you were born? Yes, um, my mom and my dad. Uh, I think they were. My mom. She was twelve when she was uh, moved from from Eritrea to Ethiopia. My dad. He was fifteen. So they were whole life. But when they split Eritrea and uh, Ethiopia, uh, my dad, he go back. My mom, she had medical problems. She was diabetic or something because, you know, when they are feeling to back to home, uh, there is walking, you know, you have to walk. You know, it's, you cannot uh, cross the board by plane or by uh, train or by car. You have to walk, you know, I don't know how many miles. So she cannot do that. So she was sick and, and they know they didn't take her uh, to Eritrea back. But my dad, he went. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I went with my dad to Eritrea. Oh, so you were, there was some, there was some time when you were in Eritrea? Yes. How long was that? Uh, it's uh, almost, I think before I came back to camp, mm -hmm. uh, almost two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where in Eritrea did you live? Uh, Asmara, that's the capital city of Ethiopia. Um, Eritrea, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. And then after that, you had to, you came back to Ethiopia, that refugee camp. Yes, and then you went to refugee camp and not Addis Ababa. No, because you cannot pass. You know that the border. Uh, as Eritrea, you cannot pass to go to the cities, so you have to stay in the camp. Yeah. Then what about your mother? Did she stay? And yeah, she was in Ethiopia until yeah until I came here, 2010. She passed away 2011, I believe. Yeah, now it's seven years. Yeah, mm -hmm. 2011 she passed away, but yeah, still still until 2011 she was in Ethiopia. I have sisters mm -hmm. who married. They married Ethiopian guys, mm -hmm. so still they are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you had to live in the camp with your father? No, no. in the camp. No, I went with my dad to Eritrea. Yes. And he passed away also in Eritrea. So I back by myself to camp. Yeah, oh. yeah. And then, um, and then you stayed in the camp until you came to Jacksonville? Uh, no, uh, as I told you first, I am from Ethiopia. You know, just I grew up and I, I know how to get in the city because I speak also their language uh, because it, Eritrean they speak Tigrinya, uh, Ethiopian they speak Amharic so I speak more than uh, Tigrinya I speak Amharic so I know you know to say you know to tell them you know to pass you know the borders mm -hmm. so yeah I went to I didn't see that much in camp because I came uh, to camp it's um, 2005 mm -hmm. 
So the process take five years. It's five, I came here 2010. So I couldn't stay in that desert, you know, it's not comfort place, you know, the refugee camp, it's not comfort place. When we go there, uh, even there wasn't war. You know, there is we were buying water, you know, just, you know, by gallon, you know, just water to drink, to wash everything. We have to buy water. You know, it was very hard to back 2005. So I stayed a little bit and I left, go to uh, Ethiopia. I was working some, but I came back 2008, yeah, 2008 to camp. So I have to stay, you know, just, you know, the process until finish, until 2010. Yeah, I sit down maybe two years. Yeah, there. Oh, so you were back and forth between yes. a camp and a decent Yeah, because I have family there, my sisters, yeah. Oh, okay, so you were allowed to be... No, no, officially, but I was going. Because, but if you give them, you know, the reason why you are going to Addis Ababa, mm-hmm. they give you a pass, you know, to some paper, you know, just it's a certain time. Maybe they're going to give you one month, go to see your mom or go to see your something you know just they they understand you know even you know we are Eritrean also we are in the camp they don't keep us like this they give us you know sometimes you know permission to go there uh, but they, they gave you maybe months maybe one, two months they don't give you more than that but we go we don't come back we get... <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was like that. <laughs> so you came to Jacksonville in 2010 Ten, yeah. um, and you came to Jacksonville Directly, well, not directly, but um, journey-wise, you were in Ethiopia, and then you came to Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and in Jacksonville, I guess you have been here for about eight years now. Mm-hmm. Um, have you been? Where have you been living in Jacksonville? Okay, when I came, I came through Warleaf. Mm-hmm. So I think um, after I came, end of July, I think twenty-one or something. Yeah, twenty-one. Uh, July 2010. Uh, by August, I start working um, as a contract. You know, by contract here in Worli. Uh I used to work. I I used to live because you know the Worli when I came as a refugee. There was um, on Atlantic and uh, Art Museum Drive. There is. Well, can we stop? We can stop. Yeah, please. So, um, where after you said that you resettled you mm-hmm. came to Jacksonville mm-hmm. in 2010, um, since then, where in Jacksonville have you been living? Okay, I used to live uh, when we came. Uh, I came by myself. My husband, he came after me. So, uh, before he came, um, the same like, you know, the other refugee, uh, if you are single, you know, they put here in the world, if uh, same like we are we are doing now, single person. If you are single, so, you know they put in you know, roommates together, maybe two. So I was with my um, three roommates. They came from we came from same camp. We speak the same language, so I was living with them at uh, Atlantic and Art Museum at uh, the apartment that who rent for us were live. Okay, so I stay there. Uh, actually, I stay there four years. Yeah, almost three, yeah, almost four years I was there because the, my friends, they moved, mm-hmm. but my husband came after that, so we continued there. So I bought house now after, before four years also. So that second, my address is this one. Just, I was four years, you know, that apartment. Now I have house after four years, yeah. And is the house also in Southside? No, uh, I live around Garvin area, yeah. Close to beach, yeah. Atlantic and Garvey. Yeah, uh, we'll probably get back to that. Um, but first of all, we went through the basic questions. So mm-hmm. I'm going to have you pick three cards out of these. Okay. So any, any yeah. just... Okay, hometown. What's this? And community. Okay, so which one would you like to start telling us about? You can start with anything. Okay, Jacksonville. (laughs) Yeah, as I said, you know, Jacksonville, it's um, 
this is the first when I came. So I, I, I travel different, you know, I don't know how many. I go, you know, down south, you know, Florida. I so saw, I go to Atlanta. I, I went also Virginia, um, Maryland. I saw different places, but I love Jacksonville because I think first I came here, I don't have any plan or so to move from this place. Sometimes, you know, when you see uh, Jacksonville, when we came back 2010, it was very hard to find a job. Still now, the same thing, because, you know, the people, even I, I don't have any work, just I'm working here. Uh, but I don't think, you know, just uh, leaving this city, I think. You know, just, you know, I don't think I'm, I'm not feeling, you know, just, you know, I feel, you know, this place, this city, it's just my home, you know, yeah. <laughs> Why do you think so? I used to, maybe I am living, you know, first when I came, just I, 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 you know, I reach here, maybe I know so well, you know, just, you know, the places mm -hmm. and it's hot. I don't like hot first when I came. But when I see now, it's the weather also, it's perfect. You know, when you go to north, you know, it's the, uh, the, the, the snow. I don't like it. So I'm good with the beach and uh, with the weather. I like it. And uh, it's big also city. It's not when you go, you know, the other cities and clean also. When I go, you know, somewhere, uh, it's, it's not clean that much. You know, the same like we are now here. So I like Jacksonville. Yeah, there is a place also to see Florida. Actually, you know, when you go to Disney Orlando, we go, we go. I go how many times to Orlando? I go how many times San Agustin? It seems like you know, just drive, go and mm -hmm. walk. I know, just I like you know that part of you know the life. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's that's uh, my husband too. Because you know, sometimes um, we we have you know so many friends moved from here. Um, yeah, for so many reason. It's not. Uh, yeah, the the main reason is about the job. Everybody's love. You know, when they go, even they have job, they complain so many things. You know, about the weather, about the people, about the area, about the apartments, everything. You know, just they complain. Uh, we what we hear. Everybody after they moved from here, they miss Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. I hear. You know, especially I'm working in you know, with the people, so. I contact you know, so many people, so they they tell me even they are not here anymore, but still they miss this city here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love I love Jacksonville actually. <laughs> you mentioned that you also like the beach. Mm -hmm. um, you like the fact that there's a lot of things to do around. Um, do you go to the beach or other parks or public spaces a lot? Not a lot, but uh, beach is seven minutes from my home. I don't go that much, but. Uh, if someone is coming, you know, from other city, I have brother live on Minnesota. Mm. So I have cousins, you know, coming to me. Just the first thing, we take them to beach because they don't have beach. <laughs> so they love beach. So it's, it's good, you know, to walk, especially summertime. It's very good. N me, I'm busy, but I would like to be there, you know, maybe two times, three times a week, you know, go just walk mm. there. I would like to be there. But for future, yes. I will be like that because I cannot work, you know, the same like I'm doing now. But yeah, for future, I would like to be like that. Yeah, park, um, there is, I like also, I, I go several places, uh, se several times. Uh, landing. The, the landing, you know, that the behind, you know, just you're going to see it and see that the river. You know, I, li I love that, that place, you know, to see. Because we don't have that much place, you know, like that. When you see on the movie or something, you know, you're going to see several cities. They have that, you know, the chair and sitting and, you know, just park, you know, seem like park. We don't have that much here. We don't have that. But I love to be learning also, sitting, you know, something. But it's not that much. But when I get, you know, time, just I go there and just, you know, sitting, see the water. Mm -hmm. I like to do that yes mm -hmm. do you think you since you are a refugee um do you think that limits your access or your ability to go out and um like use public places mm -mm. no 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 actually i am a citizen now i'm a citizen so 
I don't feel uh, that much. You know, the refugees, I don't feel that. But the problem is, you know, um, for our people, uh, it's language barrier. It's not, they don't have any fear, you know, about, but the language barrier, you know, they cannot be explosive and you know, just, you know, just express themselves, you know, how they want. That's the problem. Otherwise, we don't have any fear, I don't think. Yeah. I don't have any fear, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And when you were buying a house, when you were making a decision to buy the house, um, what were the things that you were considering as you were picking out the home that you wanted to buy? Yeah, uh, you got to face, you know, when you buy the house, um, you have more responsibility. I know that because, you know, the maintenance, uh, if something happened, I am the one will be uh, responsible. I know that. But the good thing is, you know, I was looking uh, for wrong run, you know, for future that will be my home. Uh, you know, it, it's two way, you know, when you are by renting the uh, apartments. Same thing you are paying, now we are paying mortgage. Same thing, you know, I see that part. Because when I, I start after, I arrived here after two years, just looking house. Uh, but the people, they were telling me, are you crazy, just two years been here. Why you are thinking that? But I was thinking, you know, just, um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to face, you know, because, you know, I'm doing so many stuff now also at home. But uh, it's worse because... Uh, that will be your home, you know, everything, you know, the, the, the biggest and the cleanest and that, uh, nobody bothering you, you know, seem like, you know, because, you know, when we were in the apartment, mm -hmm. uh, we had, uh, we had very good neighbor and we had also very bad neighbor. Sometimes we don't sleep. Uh, yeah, they fight, they drink, um, they have party. Uh, my sleep is very sensitive. And I couldn't sleep, you know, I can hear that, you know, I cannot sleep. I, my sleep is very sensitive. So I have to, 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 in order to sleep, it will be quiet for me. So uh, now, you know, it's the, the first things I was <laughs> looking at my house uh, the for, you know, just quiet, you know, just, you know, you don't hear anything. Yeah, so, yeah, uh -huh. that's, but yeah. Is that why you happened to have a house, buy a house that was located a little outside the Jacksonville or the city more urban area mm -hmm. and closer to the beach? Uh, no, this one is why I, I choose because uh, I uh, before we bought this one, mm -hmm. I think I, bought, I saw more than 30 house. Mm -hmm. I was, it's more than a year just going around to see. But this is uh, very... Uh, I like my home because it's, you know, the, because, you know, when be, you're going to see, you know, the bank or the borrower will be allow you how much, you know, the, there is, you know, limit, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you're going to see, you you don't see, you know, just after that limit, you know, just you, get, you have to see, you know, under that limit. But this house, it's my house, it was um, foreclosure. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, the, that wasn't price when I bought, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, when you buy the foreclosure, uh, it will be the price is very low, mm -hmm. but it's very good, good house. So I like my house because, you know, the way they build, mm -hmm. it's not old house, it's not new house, but, you know, the ceiling, you know, the windows, what I like, you know, that's why I choose this house, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So the structure, you like the structure mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. design of it. And yeah, the place also very quiet. Oh, yeah, very quiet. Yes. Did it, uh, moving to that area though, has it made it less accessible for you to be in, to be closer to your community? Yeah, anyways, you know, in this country, uh, in city, especially this city, we don't have that much community to see because, you know, it's very big city. So maybe you're going to see your community maybe at church mm -hmm. or some event. Otherwise, you don't see. Now my area, there is no any any my people, mm -hmm. anyone, you know, just, you know, that it's mixed. But uh, even when you see now refugees, we set them, set them up here, yeah, around here, because to be close the office. Yeah. But after one year, when they finish their rent, you know, their lease, they go everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
so we don't live, you know, just, you know, together like this, even. Mm -hmm. But for my church, it's not far. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not far for my church because my community, I see my community, if there is something happen, you know, some, someone pass away or someone uh, deliver, you know, get a baby or something, you know, we get together, yeah, that time. Otherwise, you know, we don't have time, you know, to just, you know, to see each other, you know, during weekdays, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so um, how would you, I mean, Jacksonville is also a really big city, mm -hmm. but I believe Addis Ababa is also a very mm -hmm. big city. So how would you compare the two? Uh, about bigness, you are well, talking about anything the... anything that, you know, based on your experience in, the, in Addis Ababa and also in Jacksonville. Yeah, Jacksonville is very big, big, very big. Uh, the good thing here, uh, uh, you know, just you don't lost. But in our country, uh, because, you know, there is no, uh, now here, you have GPS, uh, you have, you know, just a straight number or something, you don't lost. But in our country, you cannot find anything, you know, someone has to take you somewhere. Otherwise, you cannot find, you know, just, you know, telling you. For example, my job is just give me, you know, the address, just go and taking the client or me here, yes? But we cannot do that there. Mm -hmm. uh, someone has to t take you. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can go there uh, if it's famous place. Mm -hmm. Maybe church mm -hmm. or something, you know, should be to, you know, t for example, someone can tell you, yeah, there is uh, this, this is kind of church. This is you call, you know, the area. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can go and ask. Otherwise, to see your house, mm -hmm. for example, to come to your house, it's very difficult to go specific someone has to take you yeah. And, yeah to find you know the place because you know we don't use gps because our structure you know the city structure when they build this country they gps know you know where is the when they structure you know they put you know by um, when they put you know that the, the when they build uh the road mm -hmm. or when they build the house you know they know you know just you know the system knows mm -hmm. but in our country we don't have that mm -hmm. just they build you know whatever they like so to find mm -hmm. the place it's very difficult oh so so it's more it's less about the technology of the yes GPS, but more about the design of yes the city. Mm -hmm. And um, do you think it makes it easier for refugees to settle down in, um, in a more uh, formally designed cities like Jacksonville? Uh, yeah, here it's very difficult for uh, uh, refugees. Why? Uh, for me, because, you know, uh, who is reading or, you know, just asking, you know, can speak or something, mm -hmm. it's, it's very easy here. But who is a refugee, you know, don't speak or don't read? it will be confused, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I have one client, she was with me also this morning. Uh, she's from Congo. They, you know, even to come to World Live, mm -hmm. it take to her. Mm -hmm. She lives here on Phillips Highway, okay? Just to bring her here six times, we show her. We show her. Mm -hmm. I show her two times. Uh, the interpreter show her. Pierre, to, uh, you know, my coworker also show her. So one day I, she had an interview for a job. I, told, I called her, I come to her lip. Okay, she didn't come. I called. Uh -huh. She said, I lost. Where are you? <laughs> so just I was just driving on Philips Highway, I found her. Just, you know, Philips and um, uh, Walmart here. I said, you know, just I bring back her to here, you know, just to show her how is she was close. So it's very hard. You know, just for some, because, you know, I, some, sometimes um, I think, you know, that when they go places, they don't pay attention, mm -hmm. you know, if you put landmark. But they said, uh, so my, you know, even when I came, I didn't think um, I will know around because, you know, when you, you are new places, you think everything is the same. Now they, they, they said, you know, just everything is the same. They don't put, you know, landmark, you know, for example, when you come to Warleaf, you show them a racetrack, you know, there is a racetrack behind racetrack on university. So there is no any racetrack on university boulevard. So 
they have to take, you know, that, but they are not paying attention. That's the problem, I think. And no reading or to ask also. To, if they don't speak, you know, they cannot ask. Even to, to get, you know, all the uh, address, full address, okay? They, they cannot say it. Yeah, if they never go to school, they cannot catch it, you know, that even telling them, telling them, they cannot tell, you know, just, you know, my house is, uh, my address is, this is, this is, you know, everything. They cannot tell, they cannot say it. Yeah, that's the problem. That's that, that, the problem. It's not because, you know, all the refugees, they don't, there is educated, you know, uh, very high educated, but there is also, they never be schooled. They are very countryside. You know, it's, you know, the difference is, you know, just very big difference, you know, between them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's not for all refugees, mm -hmm. but there is, you know, refugees, they've been, they've been maybe very, uh, very countryside and they, they never go to school. Mm -hmm. It will be harder. Yeah, mm -hmm. very hard. So, um, I'm in Addis Ababa, can you tell us about your life as a living in a big city like Addis Ababa? I was uh, I was born and grew up in Addis Ababa. Yeah, that's my country. Yes. So because I uh, because you know I was I was there since I born and grew up. So I know everywhere because I go to school. I have friends. You know I go every. So when I come to back to Ethiopia, mm -hmm. the camp is in. It's not Addis Ababa. The camp is on the border of Ethiopia and Eritrea. It's very far. Mm -hmm. When you are going to Addis Ababa, you're going to go three days, three days drive. Mm -hmm. It's very far. Yeah, it's very far to go there. So you're going to, I think because of the road, it takes that long. Mm -hmm. It's not that, that much long. Now it's shorter, I think, two days. But when we were there, mm -hmm. because the road was bad, they don't just, they don't drive, you know. Uh, seem like highway. Mm -hmm. That's why it's make very slow. So three days it will be take to back to uh, Addis Ababa. It's very far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the um, camp is border, you know, Eritrea and Ethiopia mm -hmm. border, yes. Mm -hmm. So since you were born and raised in Ethiopia, but you're still not Ethiopian, mm -mm. Eritrean, right? Yeah. So, and how, how was that? Yeah. That's crazy. That's why I said, you know, from beginning, I said, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, I, only America is like this. But when you go Africa, it's also the same thing. If it doesn't matter if you're born in Kenya, you cannot be Kenyan. No, you can't because of you born there and grow up. No, that's, that's the system in Africa. Even when you go to Arab country, also the same thing. Uh, if you are, for example, from Ethiopia, go and grow up in, maybe they're going to give you paper that the same like green card, but originally you are from, you cannot be Arab or Ethiopia, something like that, yes. Was there hostility within, when you were living in Addis Ababa, was there hostility from the Ethiopians against Eritreans? <sighs> um, they have some conflict, but for me now, because I am more Ethiopia, because you know my my behavior, uh, my language, everything is more. I'm Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Nobody can pick me. You are Eritrea because mm -hmm. my accent also. I don't have any Eritrean accent. Mm -hmm. uh, Eritrean they speak in uh, Tigrinya, mm -hmm. so even they try to speak Amharic, they have accent. Mm -hmm. You know they have. They cannot say seem like me. I do. So nobody can tell me I'm from Eritrea because uh, I speak fluently their language. Yeah, so I don't have a problem, actually. Then so what about the time you were back in Eritrea? Did you feel that you belonged less? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. That time it was very hard. It was very hard time because um, um, I remember that time um, the people... Uh, that the, they were in Eritrea, they cannot bring anything to their country. So just, you know, by themselves with the kids, just some clothes and they have to feed it to Ethiopia. Same thing from, you are Eritrea also from Ethiopia. 
um, just the people. I feel very bad that time. Uh, it was 99. Um, so I was the oldest child. So there is, you know, some people even, we are not free yet, you know, we are there. They were asking us, you know, to sell the something, you know, our belong. I felt bad because, you know, that's, you know, we never felt that's not our, our country. Because, you know, that's our country. Because we've been there, we born and grew up there. We don't know where is Eritrea. We don't know what's there. We don't know anything about Eritrea. But, yeah, that time was very hard. Very hard to accept. But, uh, yeah, so many people go back. Uh, but they close because they start fighting the war. Mm -hmm. When they, war, they start, they close it. They cannot pass, you know, anyone. They cannot exchange. Mm -hmm. So they stop. But still there is Eritrean in Ethiopia living. It's not my family only. Mm -hmm. There is some people also. But majority already they moved uh, they, by force. It's not, by, you know, some people even they don't have time to sell their house. Mm -hmm you know, to sell their belonging, you know, there is, yeah. It was very hard time, mm -hmm. actually, yes. Would you say there's a lot of people like yourself who has a citizenship of Eritrea, but was more identified more with Ethiopian culture and Ethiopian language um, within Ethiopia? Yeah, that is, uh, we have, we are, we never thought, you know, just, you know, there is uh, in our uh, um, ID, they put okay. There is uh, there is ethnic group in Ethiopia. It's not only one. There is hundreds. Okay, so they put you know maybe younger uh, but but ethnic group is Tigray. Okay, we know that. So, but we, because the ethnic group they was divided like that. So there is also ethnic group Oromo. They put like that. Okay, so just we know. That, but uh, Ethiopia people, um, we never felt, you know, we are different people. Mm -hmm. Still, we we not, we are not, mm -hmm. we are not, because we are the same people, mm -hmm. still. Uh, but you know, the governments, you know, they fight, mm -hmm. uh, they divided, but we have the same culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is different language in Ethiopia. It's, it doesn't matter, but we are the same. They, you know, even. Even when I say I'm not Ethiopia or I'm not Eritrea, we have the same color. We have the same culture. We eat the same food. How are we going to you know, be you know, different people? We are the same. But now uh, I think you know, the governments, they fool you know, because of the propaganda. You know, the people mind, they think you know, they, are, uh, they are not one, you know, one people. Just they are against the, you know each other. They think you know some people, but this is politics. You know, it's, I don't think you know. But we are the same. We are the same. I don't believe that one because I am more Ethiopia. So I don't. Say that that is what the the uh, the majority of Eritreans or Ethiopians are. Eritrean because Eritrean, uh, it's maybe three million people. Okay, Ethiopian is one hundred something million people. It's a big country. So that the three million people, uh, they tell them, you know, the generation, they t you know, Ethiopian is it's not, it's not our, our, they are not our people. They are, you know, just our, uh, just, you know, they, they, t they tell them, you know, that's the, I don't know, the propaganda or something. They tell them the generation, they know they are different than, with the Ethiopia, but the previous generation, they don't know that. We don't know that, so we don't think, you know, it's different country. Mm -hmm. But now this generation, they think, you know, they are Eritrea, because Eritrea, um, 25 years now, it's, but Ethiopia, she have, uh, 3,000 years ago, she was country, as a country, but she's big and old country, but Eritrea is, very new. It's mm -hmm. 25 years ago. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So when you you said that you applied for resettlement when you were in um, in the camp, mm -hmm. can you tell us about the how you learned about the option of resettlement um, and also the process that you had to go through until you were resettled? Because you took it, 
you said that it took about five years, so that's a really long time. Uh, you don't need to learn to do that. When you go to the camp, they give you, uh, they accept you, you initiate. You initiate. So when you, you are, you initiate, take you, uh, they put you on the system. They give you your NCR number, case number. That's all. So they give. Uh, you don't need to do anything. Being by that, being in that camp, mm -hmm. you are the member of your mm -hmm. Okay. So just by registering, like. Yeah, you're gonna register there. That's all. So you are. You have number. You are in the system. You know, on the system. You know, they take a picture to to identify you just you have they have you know on the on the system you know your picture your age your name everything that's all so you have the card so that card is they give you um every month i i forgot but it's very they help a little bit it's not enough for one people you know to live one month one soup maybe half liter oil or maybe 15 kilo uh, weight or something, you know, they give some. Yeah, some people, you know, they don't have any income, source of income. Yeah, they live like that. But to live by that benefit you are getting from initial, it's not enough. Nobody can live. Mm -hmm. So when you get there, they gave, they gave you tents. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, to, and they gave you blanket. Uh, I think, yeah, they gave you blanket, tent and parts mm -hmm. when you get, arrive there they're gonna give you those stuff you know to prepare to live there so we when we get there the first thing they gave you tents blanket pots you know one soap or something you know that what you need you know for one month they give you that so you will find a place mm -hmm. um actually you don't build you know that day uh, nobody live tent but there is homes uh made by by soil but mm -hmm. it's uh, our system is it's seem like cement so mm -hmm. the you're gonna be roommate you know with one of you know your people uh, living with together so i was living with one of my friend yeah she i met her there just when you go there when you are new they wait you on the just there is a same like park so they know, you know, when you are coming by car, you know, the government will give you, bring you there. So they know, uh, they know the time, you know, what time um, will be people coming there. So they accept me from there. They said, oh, okay, you are single lady. Okay, come to ladies. Okay. Uh, you went there because you speak and the same purpose you have there, the same people, uh, everything is the same. So, yeah. You start to you know living with them, so yeah. By that time, you know the process will be. But um, uh, by our time, uh, the process was um, you don't need uh, to apply or something. It was uh, it was just group case. That was American need. Uh, I don't know uh, more than ten thousand um, cases. That means. One case, maybe seven people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if they are family, it's family. So it's 2010. No, 2009, uh, it came up. Uh, she needs, you know, around 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. So that by that case, you know, we don't need just like, a, you know, eyes that uh, they come, you know, from America here, uh, uh, there, and interview you just to check your background. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, your fingerprint and uh, asking some question, you know, why you came, which way you came, you know, some some idea they have, uh, same like FBI, something like that. They came and they ask you a question, really you are, it came from Eritrea or something? Yeah, that's all. There is no, nothing, just uh, after that, they're gonna put you, uh, you know, tag uh, on the post, you know, just, you know, your name. You're gonna see, you know, after that, what you're gonna do, that's all. Yeah, there is nothing, you know, to do. Just they come, I think, every six months or three months they come and do something and go. Yeah, that's all they do, yeah. So when you registered yourself, you kind of knew that you may be resettled. Yeah, but when we go, 
uh, there wasn't hope. 2005, when I go, I remember uh, I was asking one guy, he was there 12 years in the camp. Uh, there is it's when we are asking, you know, just they say nine months, nine years, seven years, you know, all the. So we said, oh, okay, maybe it, it doesn't work this one. So so we have to go and find, you know, job or to live. Uh, so that's why I went back to Ethiopia to start work. I was working, um, but by 2008, yeah, as I told you, group has, you know, the group has when came. We have to do revalidation, so I go back to a camp. But I wasn't living there, yes. And from the moment that they first invited you for an interview, for, for the first interview, how long did it take until the resettlement, the moment you come here? Landed on your it's uh, around a year. But there is maybe five, maybe it's some, for some people five years. Because uh, I did the first interview, uh, I think around January. So after three months, there is DHS, they call. Uh, I think there is a same like FBI or something, they came and to check you, you know, what you tell them, you know, back three months ago or six months ago, what you tell them to, t to you know, this, they were asking you indirect, you know, you are the right person or something to check. So after that, you're going to do medical. So medical will be work uh, until six months. If you didn't come, you know, IOM, that the one buying ticket for us, if they didn't buy, they didn't provide um, the ticket, uh, maybe it will be expired. So you're going to do again. Uh, there is a people, you know, I know maybe five, four times they are retake the medical. So after, for me, it was very fast after I, I start. Uh, so I, I, it's about a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a year. And you said that um, you also had husband, your husband, but he was resettled later mm -hmm. after you came here. Um, did you have to do the process start mm -hmm. separately? Yeah, I, no. Uh, the problem is my husband, we met in the camp. It's not we didn't camp together. So he didn't do the paperwork. That 2008, there was the revalidation to do renew you know that the one we enrolled first time but he wasn't there he was in the ethiopia but working somewhere he did he don't have information so they didn't call him he didn't go after 2008 so revalidation you cannot be longer with the unisar you can get you know that uh, you know, just that uh, they are giving you that uh, every month, but in the process, you are not there. Okay, so he wasn't there. So we, we got married, but when I came here, I sponsored him because uh, even I, was, I wasn't, uh, when I applied for him, I wasn't uh, also green card. I don't have a green card, but uh, in order to be um, bring, you know, someone your direct family, that may be child or husband uh, or wife, you can apply, you know, by I-94 you know, after you arrived. So after I arrived, I applied. He came after one year and six months, something like that. Yes. Yeah. You were sponsoring him, but yes. that alone even took a, a year and a half. year and a half. Yeah. Actually, that uh, for him, that uh, six or four, four months, um, they lost his paper. The one embassy sent him that for interview, he didn't receive it. He was in the camp. So I asked to Ethiopia embassy, just email them, what's up? Because, you know, you approved me just, you know, six months ago. But why you didn't call my husband? They said we didn't find him. He missed his appointment. He didn't receive. So I said, yeah, he didn't receive it. So I said, okay, give us, you know, another... Uh, you know, a uh, post, um, we can email him, in, uh, mail him, you know, just uh, I mail him that, that the new one after that, you know, just he received that. And after he, you know, they know, you know, he lost, he didn't receive the first one. So they accept him by two weeks, they send him here. But that the waiting four months, just he was waiting. We didn't know he didn't receive the paper. Yeah. How is the how is the life and ordinary like everyday life in the camp? 
in the camp uh, it's very hard it's very hot uh, but now this time 2010 uh, they had uh, you know they had we had water everywhere even for my house we had also uh, toilets or you know just in a bathroom but before we don't had but this time it was good uh, yeah no work we don't work that the one year I pass um, but it's you know we go church everyday church uh, get together with the community because nobody can work you know we don't work just you know sit just you know just sit but I was taking some uh, that within a year I was taking computer class English class yeah uh, the people they don't they don't care you know it's very hot very hot if you go there okay taking the class when you back you have to sleep yeah but I was doing because I don't like to sitting in a boring so I go morning when I come I have to sleep you cannot eat or something just you know you feel dizzy because there is no air condition yeah that place is very desert yeah, but uh, the people, you know, we were, we had, you know, very great love each other. Yeah, sitting, there is no light, no light in the camp, uh, but there is generator. Uh, but it was good because we had very good relationship, but, but you are out of any information. We were somewhere, even to call uh, phone, we have phone. But we have to go some mountains to get signal. Yeah, it's it's very, I don't know. Maybe they put they make like that for purpose because two country they are fighting. So to call also to somewhere, you have to go some mountains and you have to walk maybe 15, 30 minutes to go there. Yeah, it was that. But life was fine. Yeah, but you don't have you know money. You don't have income. Uh, you don't work, but we had a great time, you know, friendship, you know, just we had a very great time. Yeah. You said that there is, um, you know, you're given things to use, the very basic things to use by the UNHCR, and there is no income, there is no... Yeah, because, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so many people, they are crazy, you know, they, they lost their mind because of how they are struggling. We, you know, some people, they have you know they have support you know from family from my for me myself my brother was supporting me who is in Seattle my brother he was supporting me he was uh when I was there he was sending me every month money otherwise you know as I told you to use you know that UNICEF gave you 15 kilo weights okay okay that's that's 15 kilo one soap to wash your clothes, your body, everything, one soap, okay? Le, le, like this, you know, uh, oil. It will be enough for your, you know, one month. And sugar, very, maybe half kilo or one kilo. You know, just, you know, very limit they give. Nobody can survive by that. No, no. But uh, we don't pay for water. We have water. We don't pay for rent, that's uh, what we live. But you need, you know, so many stuff. You you need onion, you need uh, meat, you need, you know, you need what you eat, you know, just, they give also beans, you know, the, the beans, you know, the same like kidney beans or something, they gave us maybe one or two kilos. But it's not enough to survive, you know, living by that. But yeah, we have to have, you know, some support. What if? Say you have some money that your brother sent to you. Where do you spend it? How do you spend? And there is, there is, there is, uh, there is, uh, from our community also from Eritrea. Uh, they are business mind. They was you know doing you know overseas also same thing. So they do the same thing you know in the camp. They sell. They sell. They have shop. We had restaurant in the camp. We had uh, movie. We had, yes, yeah, we had movie, we had church. So we had also shop, we have, you know, to buy meat, everything, you know, we have there. So the people, you know, the, who is business people, 
uh, it's not only ours. There is a local people also who is citizen in that area. They open, you know, the grocery or shop, something like that. So we buy from there because we need tomato, we need onion, you know, so many stuff, you know, mm -hmm. so we buy that one. Mm -hmm. If you work in those shops or restaurants and they're within the camp. Yes. Do you earn money? Yes. Can you earn money? Yes. Yeah. But there is not enough no. opportunities for people. No, because, you know, maybe we were very big. Our camp is the first, uh, we were more than 20,000 people there so it's too much so many people so even you have when you let's say if you open in one restaurant maybe you're gonna hire one or two people yeah to do the work so you pay them it's not that much mm -hmm. because the area the location mm -hmm. the place you know it's you're gonna work you know you know daytime everything is done and nobody moving because it's very hot mm -hmm. it's very desert the place but night time, the people come out because uh, to take, you know, air or something, you know, to enjoy, come and sit down and uh, to chat, you know, with the friends. We does that, yeah. So night time, everybody. So night, maybe after um, 11 o'clock, there is no generator. There is a people that has generator, mm -hmm. so we don't buy i don't have actually actually i don't have light in my home but what i use candle yeah just we use candle because we don't stay night time home we go outside chatting with the people when we came home just we have also flashlight everybody has flashlight so come and sleep and uh, that's all yeah we cook everything we eat you know during daytime that's done yeah and how was the community in, within the camp? I, I see that you chose community as one of your um, topics. So can you tell us a little bit? Yeah, it was very great, you know. I miss sometimes, you know. Sometimes, you know, you don't miss that place, you know. But you miss the people. You know, we had engagement there. It was, you know, just, it was very great, you know. Even because, you know, we were, as I told you, over 20,000 people. You know, we love each other. If you have some problem, we stay because we don't have job, so we don't have to do. Just if you sick, we're gonna be with you until you heal. Uh, if I sick also, you know, like that. And we have, we don't work, so we go place to place. You know, today you're home, tomorrow. If you have money, you feed us. You know, you we enjoy the same like my money. If you have money. We eat together. Uh, if you ha it's the same thing we do. So I, I, I always miss that because uh, I don't see anyone uh, who was my friend there because when the process came, uh, my best friends now, some of them Norway, some of them Canada. Here I have one friend, but she uh, live Baltimore. We don't talk that much because we don't see here also. Even we, we come here, we cannot do that. But even, you know, from that camp for those people, because this country is very big. Mm -hmm. You know, when we came, I remember when I came, we were 35. Okay? We were 35 to Jacksonville, only me I came. So this from when, you know, the plane when it came, you know, from Ethiopia, London to here, uh, we divided when we go to Newark, okay? Newark, some of them Colorado, some of them Atlanta, some, so, you know, one, 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 35, we split uh -huh. everywhere. So, yeah, we had very, I miss, you know, sometimes when I remember, it's not to, to miss that place, but yeah. Miss, you know, the community, what we had, uh, we pray, uh, we go, you know, just all the time. We have just tried to celebrate to pass the time, you know, just to pass the time, pray, eat, sleep, and, to, you know, to, to pass the time. So one year, I was very happy there. And how was the community formed? Was it within the people that lived in the same building? No, it's the same area. Now me... For example, my friend, she who first time you know she let me in, 
she is the one, you know, the owner of the house. So she came 2009 um, to here, um, New Jersey, I think, yeah, New Jersey. So she came here, I was by myself. But I have friends around because we have so many houses they build, you know, that they gave it, you can build everywhere. You know, the, in the camp, you can, nobody can tell you this is my property or something. You can build. If you have, uh, you know, strengths to do, to, you know, build the house, you can do it. So, yeah, we have so many houses. So, but me, for me, I was living by myself. But my friend now, she was living with her brother. Yeah, same like that. So my, my husband, he was living with his friend, one friend. So we live like this. We don't live, you know, too much people in one. Uh, uh, but we live, but we visit each other. So you came to Jacksonville, but you didn't decide to leave, uh, leave the city and settle down in another city, Kazan, which I know is a case for some people. Um, why did you decide to just stay in Jacksonville? I like it because, I, as I told you, first I went to Atlanta. I don't like, you know, the apartment set up, the people, uh, and the DC also, our people. It's not I'm talking about other people, but the, our people, the way they live. Uh, especially DC, when you see it's all Ethiopian, you feel you are in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is in our language. Everything, you know, it, there is court also in our language. Mm -hmm. But when you see the people, the way they live, still they are living, you know, the same way with where we are living. So I don't like to be DC, no. So you saw a future in Jacksonville, <laughs> better future in Jacksonville. Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. To change your life, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I think this may be my last question. Okay. Um, so if you're, if the city official came to you and asked um, Sion, if I'm going to take your suggestion and make a change to the city that can impact, that could positively impact refugee communities, what would be your suggestion? To help refugees. Yeah, in this city, uh, I think, you know, um, refugees, they need more help. What kind of help they need? Um, you know, in this city, what we don't have are uh, factories. You know, the, the factories, you know, they can do it, you know, just, you know, without, uh, without English or without age, without gender, you know, they can do it. For example, moms, dad, they have their ages, it's not, you know, 65, they can work, but they don't have work to do, okay? That, that second thing, the mentality, to change the mentality, uh, teach them, you know, give more advantage, you know, to learn them to, you know, to, you know, just use, you know, the English, you know, the uh, introduce with the people, with the place, you know, to become, you know, the, to become the, to become them too familiar, you know, with the place, with the people, with the language, everything. But now the problem is, um, uh, it, I'm not blaming, you know, the city because governments provide ESOL class. If they are under five years, they can learn, go and learn. But they gave up. They think, you know, they don't learn anymore. This one is not working, you know, anymore, they think. So that, um, and teach, teach the people because, you know, uh, to be independent, you know, just instead of depend on government or on benefits, uh, they need more uh, instruction or more education to be independent, you know, just, you know, uh, just they can say, you know, I can do it. Something, you know, I can learn, I can work, I can change, you know, just, say, you know, uh, when you see, um, they are seeking for government house when they come here. They are seeking, you know, to get food stamp and uh, something like that, you know, just benefit, you know, and instead of that, if they learn, you know, if they, someone teach them, you know, how to be successful, you know, by life. I think, you know, they're going to be, you know, successful, you know, to, because 
most of them they are they can do it you know just any kind of job you know they can they can even you know i don't think that much we have um you know disability with the medical or something you know just they, they couldn't work they can work they can do but the problem is now uh the mentality is they think you know just you know because of the communication because of uh, you know they get the information mm -hmm. make them depend you know just you know they think you know they cannot do it mm -hmm. that's that's very bad but you know more education for refugees you know how they can become successful mm -hmm. you know just to show them you know to show them you know to show them to give them example you know the other people who came as a refugee how become you know successful maybe they can make them you know just you know more to become you know independent i think why do you think their mentality why do you believe they um their mentality is, is in such a state yeah same uh because of you know we came from different place okay as I said, you know, first time, uh, we came, you know, very low, low, and very countryside, never go to school. So those, those people, they don't know. When they come here, they need years to catch up. Everything, the culture, the, the culture, or uh, the language, everything, okay? So some of them also, they never work, okay? Before they came here, they never work. So, they have to learn here to work and to be successful. You know, just, you know, those things you know, I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for okay. this interview. I, I'm uh -huh. very glad that you were able to do it. I know you have, you have a lot of calls coming in, but thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.